We've got changes to Rangar, Vladimir, Yorick, and the Tribunal, covered in this episode of the Patch Overview. Hey everybody, we're back again this week with designer Feral Pony, who will walk us through the changes in this patch, which is also being used for the Season 2 World Championship. While this video doesn't cover every single change, it will explain the thought process behind some of our decisions. Let's start with Rangar. He's one of the newest champions to the league, but he came out a little bit weaker than we had hoped. What are we doing this patch to give him more of that predatory punch? Rengar wasn't quite the ultimate predator he wanted to be, so we're beefing up his chasing and ambushing potential. So we're making a couple of quality life improvements to Unseen Predator that should make him a little bit easier to use the skill effectively. Leaping between targets from Brush should now be a lot smoother, and Rengar will now automatically attack any champion he's pounced on. So we're moving the cast time on Battle Roar, so this will basically allows him to cast it while moving. So he won't just kind of stop in place and angrily yell at people, he'll be able to continue chasing them down and killing them. So there are two main reasons why we made Thrill to Hunt faster. One is this is often his initiation move, we really want him to kind of excel at this. Uh, the other one is again hunting people down. Uh, if there's a straggler, we really want him to be able to kind of go into stealth mode and actually catch and kill that person. Overall this should make Rengar way more awesome and that really fulfill that ultimate predator fantasy. The Vladimir changes are always a bit controversial, but we have some changes in store for him this patch. What are we doing to the Crimson Reaper? So in the previous patch, we reduced the health cost of Tides of Blood, uh, and now players are basically able to keep it up at max stacks, which is effectively doubling the damage of the spell from previously. So as a result of this, a lot of Vladimir players are now stacking Magic Pen, um, and basically just wrecking teamfights in the middle of the game. Uh, I really want him to be sort of this late game AP carry, but right now because of the Tides of Blood change, he's just peaking too early. So to compensate for the reduced risk involved in stacking Tides of Blood, we're going to be pulling back the damage on the higher ranks of the skill. This should soften some of that mid game punch, but still allow Vladimir to do really impressive damage late game after he builds some AP. Ziggs is getting an interesting change to his Satchel Charge ability. Take us through it. Satchel Charge is a really amazing and fun ability on Ziggs, but it just didn't really have the impact we wanted. So as a result, we're increasing the knockback distance for Ziggs' opponents, as well as increasing how far he flies when using that ability. This should allow him to use it as a more reliable escape method, as well as allow him to get over walls he couldn't previously. Yorick has always excelled at bullying champions in lane. What do we have in store for the Gravedigger this patch? So Yorick's ability to harass his opponents with ghouls and not allowing them to have any real counterplay is really frustrating to play against. So we're increasing the mana cost on Omen of Pestilence. This should bring his early game power down a little bit, as well as make him think a little more carefully about when and where to use his ghouls. So we're reducing the base movement speed of Yorick's ghouls, and almost more importantly, we're making it so they no longer block pathing. Um, this will allow Yorick's opponents to kind of kite the ghouls easier early game unless Yorick commits and lands that Omen of Pestilence first. The ghouls will still return to their full movement speed by about level 12, so this shouldn't impact him outside of the laning phase. Misfortune and Caitlyn are two carries that have pretty much disappeared in competitive play. What are we doing this patch to give them a real role? For Caitlyn, due to her really long range and kind of sniper persona, she was a very strong poke champion. But Piltover Peacemaker wasn't really fulfilling its job, especially when firing through minions. Uh, the damage fall off was just too steep, which caused her to kind of underperform in lane. So Misfortune was never a bad AD carry to pick, but she really lacked that niche or special sauce that gave her a really solid pick in a team comp. So the first thing we're doing is we're adjusting Strut, we're decreasing the amount of time it takes for Strut to come back up off cooldown, and we're decreasing the amount of time it takes for it to reach maximum movement speed. This will increase her map mobility quite a lot and allow her to see a lot of that fun lane switching and roaming gameplay a lot of the pro teams are doing right now. The last thing we're doing is we're removing the wind up time on our ultimate. This will allow her to sort of lay down that heavy AoE damage faster and more reliably than before. Thanks for a pony. Now, changing pace a little bit, we're going to have Dr. Light, game design specialist, take over the mic. So Light, we've got some changes coming in for the Tribunal. What are they and why are we making them? We're really happy with the impact the Tribunal's had on good sportsmanship and behavior in League of Legends so far, but we think there are always ways we can improve. This past summer, we experimented with reform cards, which gave punished users much more feedback as to why the community voted to punish them. However, we want to extend this additional feedback to Tribunal voters as well, and we're adding two new features to honor their contributions to our community. First, we've added the Justice Review. Here you can go over your previous cases, including the ones you skipped, to see the results. You can also view stats on your level of accuracy, including number of toxic players you helped remove, number of toxic days of gameplay you helped prevent, and your longest correct streak. 
We're also adding the Halls of Justice. This is a new ladder for Tribunal users to see how their contributions compare to their peers. Players will get bonus points for getting streaks of correct cases, and we're excited to see and highlight the most positive contributors to our community. Lastly, we did some research and found that the vast majority of Tribunal voters don't come to the Tribunal for the IP rewards. They're actually motivated by the opportunity to improve the community. In addition, we discovered that the group of players who are motivated purely by IP, these players were actually the least accurate voters in the Tribunal. In light of this evidence, we've decided to run a large-scale experiment to replace IP rewards with these two new features. We believe this change will improve Tribunal accuracy overall. That's it for us for this episode of the Patch Overview. Please subscribe to the Riot Games YouTube channel and leave us your comments just below. Thanks for watching.